today's show, Nissan gets ready to push a software update to all 2018 Nissan Leafs to fix rapid gate problems. Tesla begins Model 3 test drives in Europe. Dodge says the next Challenger will be electrified. And GM considers plugging in all of its utes. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We're 100% Kiwi and 50% community owned. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Hi there, folks. Welcome to another roundup of all of the best green car news there is from the past week. As usual, I'm really glad you're here. After spending much of 2018 apparently ignoring the issue, Nissan has finally prepared a software update for all 2018 Nissan Leafs that should address the now infamous rapid charger throttling problem known as RapidGate. Nissan has been installing this new code base on all new Leafs at the factory for some time, but now older examples of the second generation Leaf will get the update too. I've made a video on this channel discussing the update in a little more detail, so to be sure to check it out at the end of this one if you want to know if you should get the update for your car or not. Volkswagen has stopped taking orders for the e-up in Europe after the automaker admitted that it just can't keep up with the demand for its diminutive plug-in. Much smaller than the e-Golf, the e-up packs an 18.7 kilowatt hour battery pack, DC quick charging, seating for four adults, and an any DC range of around 100 miles, that's 160 kilometers. Orders have been halted while the automaker catches up with back orders, although I should note that the e-up is likely to get a refresh this year, so maybe that's it for the older version. With European spec Model 3s now rolling off the production line in Fremont, California, Tesla has begun offering test drives in Europe to Model 3 reservation holders there. With two ships of cars on the way to Europe from California, it won't be all that long before the first high-end Model 3 reservation holders get their cars. March is the promised date, but those in right-hand European markets like the UK and Ireland will unfortunately not be getting their cars anytime soon. Tesla is focusing on left-hand drive markets around the world before it even starts Model 3 right-hand drive production. As Mercedes-Benz continues to ramp up preparation for the launch of the EQC electric SUV, it's been announced this week that the firm will be constructing a new facility in Jawor, Poland, specifically for the construction of electric car battery packs. While the batteries will be built in Jawor, the cells themselves will not be made in situ. Instead, Benz's parent company Daimler announced a 20 billion euro investment in securing battery cells on the open market. The new facility in Poland will be built alongside a new factory being constructed there to make internal combustion engines for Mercedes-Benz vehicles. Following Tesla's surprise announcement last week that it will be cutting 7% of its workforce, one of Tesla's rivals, hydrogen fuel cell truck company Nikola Motors, has extended an invitation to those laid off come and work for us instead. Nikola CEO Trevor Milton said on LinkedIn this week that those who were laid off should contact him or HR directly with their resume, adding that recent hires have come from both Faraday Future and GM layoffs. This is not a bash on Tesla, he stated, adding, if Tesla could, they would keep everyone, but it's the result of growing in a competitive market. I hope I can help all those affected. Bidirectional charging, being able to transfer power to an electric vehicle and then back from that vehicle to the electrical grid, has been one of Chidemo's party tricks for a long time, allowing electric cars to be used to help smooth out the electrical grid and also to provide emergency backup power in the event of a disaster. This week, however, the Charge-In initiative, founded to develop and establish CCS as a rapid charging standard, has published two new papers that set up a roadmap for CCS to gain its own vehicle-to-grid connectivity. It says we'll see intelligent, controlled and cooperative charging hit the market next year with bidirectional power transfer from 2025. Continuing its work in developing all new air travel solutions for the future, Boeing has successfully completed the first test flight of its Electric Autonomous Passenger Air Vehicle, or PAV, prototype, which last year was nothing more than just a conceptual design. 
The flight took place in Manassas, Virginia, and demonstrated the PAV's abilities to undertake vertical takeoff and landing, hovering and forward flight. Range of the PAV is currently set at around 50 miles, that's 80 kilometers. By now, I'm sure you know that Ford is considering an electric or plug-in hybrid Mustang, and GM has already showcased an eCopo Camaro, and now Dodge might be about to get in on the action too, with FCA's new boss confirming that the next Challenger will be electrified in some way. It's unlikely to be an all-electric model, but at the moment a plug-in hybrid variant is likely, as it would help Dodge meet emissions requirements. That said, I'd love to see an all-electric Hellcat muscle in on the action with sub three-second sprint times and 800 horses at the wheel. Muscle in? Get it? Ugh, never mind. My sense of humour is just devilishly good. Sticking with the theme of following the market trend, Duncan Aldred, vice president of the GMC brand, says General Motors is considering electrifying its heaviest pickup trucks and SUVs. While GMC isn't a common brand in New Zealand, save for a few import specialists, it's conceivable that the new tech behind these new models could trickle down to Holden, New Zealand, which of course would be great news for Kiwi buyers. It's not clear yet if or when that will happen. Tesla will release its quarterly earnings report on Wednesday next week, and as usual, it will hold an earnings call shortly afterwards. During that call, analysts, large investors and select members of the press will be given a chance, as usual, to quiz Elon Musk and Tesla's CFO Deepak Ahuja. Traditionally, small shareholders haven't been given much of a chance to pose questions, but thanks to YouTuber and investor Galileo Russell, who is working with startup company Say, Tesla has agreed to answer questions posed through Say's new portal. I've put a link in the show notes so you can take part if you're interested, but you will need to be a Tesla shareholder. Volkswagen's IDR, the single-seat custom-built race car that set a new world record at Pikes Peak International Hill Climb last year, has a new challenge in its sights, the world-famous Nürburgring Nordschleife in Germany. Its goal? To break the existing 6-minute 45.9 second electric car record set there in 2017 by Peter Dumbreck in a NIO EP9 race car. Volkswagen says it will attempt the record in the near future. Good luck to Volkswagen and its chosen driver, Romain Dumas. And finally, if you've travelled anywhere by electric car in Northern Europe, you probably know about the Dutch company Fastned and its easy-to-use network of multi-standard, multi-pump electric car charging station sites. Given you're at a charging station for a considerable amount of time, Fastnet has always wanted to include restrooms and shops at its charging sites, but the Dutch Minister of Infrastructure and the Environment has denied its permit applications for the same, several times in fact. Luckily though, the Dutch Council of State has now overturned these decisions and given Fastnet permission to give facilities and shops at its charging sites. So no more crossing your legs when you're on a trip. And on that note, I'm going to say goodbye. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Tell your friends about the show. And if you've got some feedback, you know what to do. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next episode. And while you're at it, why not switch to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company? Go on, ditch those emissions in 2019 and go completely Carbon Zero. Thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite, see you next time.